Hello, sorry about that. It seems that um, Instagram uh, kicked us off the session. So we'll um, start again and hopefully um, Dom will also be able to rejoin. I'm not, I'm not sure if it was uh, my end or, or, or his end, but hopefully you all, you all noticed um, and, and judging by his uh, Instagram skills, um, well, we'll, well, I wait to be uh, amazed by them. But um, um, so just before it cut out, and for those of you just joining us now, um, we were talking I heard about that. Oh, you, you actually heard it. Sorry about that. I'm not sure who, who's going to do it, but um, glad we're back. Uh, we're back in the game. Um, well, just to recap what you were saying, you, you were describing the... Uh, the main difference between a ruby style uh, with darker, uh, more fruit forward, um, uh, sort of juicy, opulent styles of port versus a, a tawny, which you were just talking about how it um, gradually uh, fades in colour, developing those lovely tawny hues. Um, so, is, is that primarily um, then due to the, the barrels? It's the aging process in the cask that has this effect. It's, it's, it's basically, it's a fractional oxidation of the wines. As it breathes, interacts, the, the oxygen transmitting through the wood interacts with the color pigmentation in the wines and oxidizes the color and it loses its, the bright red tone color tones and turns, it goes more into, into these brown, um, the brown colors that you see on the rim of this wine. Um, and so it's, but by, if you think the, the wine aging in the barrel with the, um, you get natural evaporation through the wood where the, 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 the wood is, is, is wet with the wine liquid on the inside, it's dry on the outside. And so by osmosis, some water in the water content of the wine is drawn through the wood and evaporates. Um, at the same time, something has to replace that space inside the cask, inside the barrel, is that oxygen is going the other way. Then that, in these parts per billion, fractional quantities, pass through the wood and then it go into the wine and become, um, and then it, it becomes lightly oxidized and takes on this very different um, flavor profile. So it's not, it's not just the... Um the color that fades, but also the, the flavor uh, changes. It has a, it's, it's an aging process that has and interacts with the flavors. They become a little bit more concentrated. You lose, you lose the red and black forest fruit flavors of the young, vibrant wine, and you take on the slightly more concentrated sugars that of the wine, they become a little bit more caramel. You get almond flavors. As the wines move into a, an older phase, 25 to 35 years of, of age, you get a lot of orange blossom, um, sort of bergamot style flavors come through. Um, and nutty toasted caramel quality. And then you get that very nutty toasted caramel flavors, absolutely correct, yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like um, everybody's dream uh, from a dessert menu. Um, well, well I, I, mean, I must admit, I often say I'm probably a little bit biased, but I often say it's virtually impossible to have one glass of tawny port because you have to have a second one afterwards because, I mean, it, it's just, it's so attractive on the palate. Um, there is one thing that is absolutely fundamental with, well, uh, essentially with all wines, but, but particularly with tawnies, because although people think that port is a big muscular structured wine, Tawnies, because of their aging process, they become very elegant and delicate, um, very fine. And they take on wonderful floral nose that, as I was describing just now, that sort of orange blossom, the nuttiness, almonds, um, bergamot, and, and that toasty sort of caramel tones. Um, but they are very delicate wines, and therefore temperature management of these wines is absolutely essential. And they should be served at 12 to 14 degrees centigrade. Um, if that's that, that's but, one or two people. Sorry, sorry. Would you advise that temperature for all tawny ports? Um, yes, yes. And, yeah. And and essentially, I mean, you you can. I mean, I keep them in the fridge here at home, so that a fridge normally the door of a fridge is seven or eight degrees, six to eight degrees Celsius. Um, that's possibly a little bit on the cool side, but it's much better to serve the wine that's slightly colder to begin with, because one in the ambient temperature of one's living room or and or when, where you're having your, your your meal rapidly the wine will come up to temperature so it's better to be too cool to begin with and then it'll go up 
than to start with a wine that is too warm and then it becomes just too ethereal and all you get is the alcohol on the nose and nothing else. No, no doubt about it. And um, that, that, well, one, the flavor profile, but also serving it slightly chilled uh, completely transforms the, the tasting moment. So whilst many people will consider vintage port or, or ruby port more a drink for, for cooler uh, times of year, um, we in Portugal often drink Tony Port um, after lunch when it's 40 degrees. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and then, the, you know, the cooler is fine. The cooling also has a way of sort of subduing the alcohol um, and it, it, it sort of it doesn't become so heady, um, and we, which is very helpful. I mean, you can take Tawny Port on a picnic. Um, it's, it becomes extraordinarily versatile. Um, and um, the, 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 these wines are, you know, frankly, they're absolutely delicious. Um, they're, 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 they're quite complex wines to make because, um, as you alluded to earlier on, when you were saying, um, you know, to, to, to leave a wine in cask. And I mean, one of the wines that I've got here, this one, for example, this is a 40 year old tawny. It, it's not that easy for you to see the color. Sorry, but before it's, we go to that. Um... Perhaps it'd be worth explaining. You've just mentioned a, a 10 year old and then a 40 year old to me. Um, the, the, the most common styles of tawny port are, are what's called um, aged tawnies, which are blended tawnies. And, and you tend to get 10, 20, 30, 40. But why is that? And, um, and how does that differ? As the, the, essentially, tawny port is permitted. We're, we're, we're very heavily regulated in the port trade. I mean, the European wine industry is pretty heavily regulated. Um, but they've sort of made it into a sort of an exquisite art and a profession here in Portugal with the port trade. Um, and um, tawny ports, there, there is a natural evolution between from a ruby into a tawny as the wine's age in cask. So you so at about six, seven years of age is when you, do, you, when you get the transition from one color to the other. Technically, you are not allowed to have a tawny, uh, a tawny port is not um, technically, um, a, or a, a single year tawny port has to be seven years of age before it can be released. And then um, we have, as you said, there are four um, age styles of wine, which is with, with their blended wines, with an average, it's not a mathematical, uh, uh, not a precise mathematical average. Um, and it's not like in some um, industries where, some um, spirits industries where the youngest component is that age. But this becomes an average and you can have wines with an average of 10, 20, 30 or 40 years of age. Um, right. And those are the sort of, the, sorry? Tony, for example, could have some wines that are 15, 16, 17 years old uh, with some slightly younger wines to balance it. Yes, um, exactly. I mean, a 10 year old on a, a 10 year old generally and, the, and the, the blends that we have in our in our family with with what our wines tend to probably be, you know, they're, they're just a fraction over the indicated age because we just believe it gives a little bit more complexity, a little bit more pleasure in, in consumption. But a 10 year old will def will a 10 year old will have a tiny bit of a eight or nine year old wine to give it a bit of freshness on it. It'll probably have a 14 or a little bit of 15 year old wine to give it a bit of complexity and intensity. The majority will be around 10 and 11 years of age. Interesting. And so it's, a, it's, it's a quite a complex process, isn't it? It so is. I mean, it, it, it's... Um, year in, year out to get that balance when you can't use the same components that you used the year before because they're all slightly older. As exactly. They Exactly. Um, and so we're, we're, we're permanently, um, you know, we're permanently looking at the wines, we're permanently um, adapting the blend, and we're also nurturing wines as they age, as they go into the aging stream. Um, five, six, seven, eight year old wines will begin to be partly blended as they progress through their life. And the, as they get to the 10 year old lot or ultimately to a 20 year old or 30 or 40. Um, so we're, 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 we're sort of we're directing the wines in the direct in into the, the way we want them to go and to keep them a little bit fresh. If they if they they're, they're lacking a little bit of, of lifted aromas, we can add a little bit of wine of a similar age that is a bit stronger with a higher, you know, the characteristics are more aromatic. Um, so it's a constant it, it's. 
it's not some some listeners may be thinking that we work on a solera system which is you take out 10% and you you add 10% to the mother lot we don't do that ours is an adjusted blend progressively as we go through um, what it's we do is part. yes it is it is and it's and it takes a huge amount of time and experience to get to the point where you can pick up and do something like this um the, the, the wines that we make, um, the wines that one will go out to buy today in, in, a, in a shop um, will have been blended probably between a year and nine or ten months ago before they are bottled and then put into the commercial circuit. That's so that the lot can then, the final blend ready to go out can really marry. So all the component parts are completely harmonious and marry together. Interesting. And, and as a result, as, as the aging has been carefully done in the cellars and then it's been blended, once a Tawny Port is bottled and sold, no matter what the age on it, it it's ready for drinking and it's not going to improve further. Yes. I mean, the, 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 obviously there is a fractional amount of evolution of the wine in the bottle, but it, there, it's, it's very, very insignificant. A Tawny Port generally, 10, 20, 30, 40 year old Tawny Port, um, or the other style of tawny that I'll come to, the culieta or single harvest. Um, those are wines that are bottled when they are ready for ready for drinking. I mean, a bottle can be kept unopened for a year or two in normal, good, proper cellar conditions, but it's not a wine to lay down for your 21st birthday at birth or something. That's the, that's for a vintage port. Um, and so these wines that 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 they're, they're I mean you can keep them as I say for a couple of years, but generally they're wines for immediate consumption. They also uh, have. The, sorry, I've just seen that Deba is asking, um, who decides that? I assume uh, you're referring to who decides uh, when to bottle and when to release. That would be the head uh, blender winemaker. Who, who in our case is, is yes. Charles, but um, you know, it's David Gimrange at, at Flaggate, it, there, there are many, but it would be the head winemaker who decides that. Yeah, um, and you know, selects the wines and, and selects lots to, the, the lots of wine to, 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 to make. And so, yes, I mean, it, it's, um, I, I think you also have to remember that um, the quality of the wine, if you're going to keep a wine in cask for, up to 40 years and in some cases much longer and we have wines that are 50 60 80 years old we've got some 90 we've recently released a 1963 um a a a, a, a tawny port from 1963 um you know that that is a wine that to be able to survive all this time all these years in cask I mean, very nearly 80 years in cask. I mean, the qualities of the wine have to be absolutely outstanding in the, in the first instance to get that, um, that um, balance. Um, the, um... So into, as, you, as you mentioned in the cask, as they're aging there carefully, obviously the, the cellar master has a, has a huge role to play in this as they age slowly. And um, before the lots are chosen to be blended, as they're aging there. So the, the, the casks, they do vary in size. So um, Madsen has, has asked us um, a little bit, does the different size of the, of the cask affect how it ages? And also yes. type of wood in, in Bordeaux and Burgundy, for example, everyone talks about first fill oak and how toasted it is. Um, that's not something that's relevant. No, I, I think it's very important to, to, to answer um, answer the question first is that a wine will evolve and mature quicker in a smaller cask than it is than it will be in a in a bigger cask. So, um, a, a classic French barrique of two twenty five liters against a, a port pipe of five hundred and fifty liters, it will mature much quicker because you've got greater surface area contact to volume of wine. So it's a very simple equation. Um, we're looking for a slower evolution in the wines. And so generally by nature, we keep larger, we will our, age our wines in, in larger, um, in, in, the, in the classic port pipe of 550 litres or what we call um, um, barrels or we call car casks, which are 600 litres. So 550, 600 litres is the general size. But then this is common to everybody in the port trade. Um, we, we do have small barrels when you're coming to the end of a lot 
and you need to top up the casks because obviously there's evaporation and they need to be topped up. Eventually, you'll have half a barrel wine left and you're not going to leave a barrel on ullage. So uh, you're and talking so about that evaporation or, or angel share, as, it, as it's termed, because the angels can get quite thirsty when it comes to tawny port. They're, they're, they're as, extraordinarily as a... thirsty when it comes to port. Um, I, I've got, we, we've worked, we, we have a sort of an estimate on evaporation. After 10 years, we've lost one fifth of the original volume through evaporation. Um, at about 40 years, we've lost 50% of the original volume. Um, so um, when we've got the, the, this evaporation, what, tends, what happens with, with, with the evaporation of wines, what the, the, the content of evaporation actually is the water content inside the wine that is, that is evaporating. Um, so the physical loss is actually water that is the, the liquid content of wine or port of, of everything. As the, as the evaporation progresses, the wine becomes more dense, primarily in our case with the glycerines, with the sugars. And so the evaporation rate slows down. And from 50 years of age until it gets to about 100, we only lose another 10 to 15 percent by volume. And at about 100 years of age, the, 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 the evaporation rate is, is fairly insignificant. Um, so it's a flattening curve. But in the first years, as I say, at, at, in 10 years, we've, we've lost 20% of the volume. And in, uh, so I imagine as they age the, and, and, the, and that evaporation happens, the wines become more complex and concentrated. Yes, they do. The, the, the aromatics, the complexity of the wine, the flavours become much... They, 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 there's a constant evolution in the flavours in the wine um, as, the, as, they, as, they, as they change and there's, this, the, the, there's the, the, the effect of, the, um, of this fractional oxidation going on on the wines. So very, very slow. You do get... And the flavour profiles change and um, the colour... And the nuances of colour go go through i mean if we look and i one can talk we need to get back to the wood thing but it's yes. difficult to see but these two wines you can't really see but this one is the the color tone on the teardrop there's still quite a strong tinge of pink in there you can just see some highlights of pink coming through but that's a 10 year old uh, that's the 10 year old you look at this one which is a 30 year old and what you're getting on that is almost a slight green sheen being picked up on the teardrop of the wine. Upbringing. And and so and that's actually it's a forty year old, sorry. And so th there's this colour transition as the colours, the nuances of colour are changing in the wine. They're losing their sort of their, their pink colour profile, the reds of the younger wines, and they move into this green and sort of slightly caramel tone and brick orange tone colour. Um but to return to the wood, the wood that the barrels are absolutely fundamental. The, 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 you, you mentioned the cellar master. I mean, the, 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 the job of the cellar master and his coopers is absolutely fundamental. I mean, they, they're the most extraordinary people to watch working. Um, their knowledge goes back um, for centuries. Um, and they are the guys that are really fundamental for the looking after and bringing up these wines and, and you know, with the accompaniment and obviously of, of my cousin, your, uh, of Charles. Um, but the, 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 the wood is, 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 is so, so important. It's always, it's um, always oak. Um, and it used to be in the past. I mean, it's, it's, it's varied from around different places in Europe. Um, before the First World War, a lot of the oak came from the Baltic states and the, and the word, the term that was used in those days for the oak was memel oak because it was shipped from the port of memel. Um, and um, so Baltic oak, which was very good, dense, slow growth, cold climate, so very good wood. Um, in there's then there's always there, there's a, nowadays there's a little bit of middle European oak, um, some Italian um, from the northern north northeastern Italy. Um, a, some French and a bit of Portuguese oak. But the, the colder the climate, oak, the better, really, because it's slightly denser, slow, closer grain. Um, the barrels that we use, and you mentioned before, um, the question of the people in, in the wine world and the consumers, we're very used to drinking red wines that have been aged in um, new French oak barrels and sometimes American oak. And then people talk about the toast. Is it medium? Is it heavy toast? And what have you. 
that for us, the port is it's really important. Um, it, it's really important that we have um, our barrels are, and this is a slightly boring way of saying it, it's a vehicle for maturation, not a vehicle to impart flavor. So we're not looking to get taste from the wine. We're not looking to get the tannins or the vanilla slight flavors, that sweetness that comes out of the oak wood transferred into the wine. For us, the barrel is uh, is something to age the wine very slowly. So we 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 need to season our barrels before we start our pipe support before we start using them. And normally it'll take five to six years of seasoning a barrel before it can go into the aging stream and looking after our our wines. Um, there are two ways that we can season our barrels. Sometimes in the but really in the early stages we will either use red wine or very, very young port. And it'll be put into the barrels for two, three months and it'll be taken out and then fresh wines will be put in there. As the wine, as they evolve over the first two or three years, we will do that and it'll probably will move from maybe every three or so months, we'll move to every six to nine months. And then in the, in the last year and a half or couple of years, depending on how the barrel is evolving, and we will then put young, very, very young ports in there for a short period of time. And then only after five years or so will we consider that a barrel can be used for aging wine for a long period of time. Um, but so, so this, um, so you, you're not wanting to impart any wood flavors on the, on the wine? No, no, so, no. So that, that, the, the amount of effort taken to get the barrels to perfect level coupled with the angel share, the evaporation, the mixing of the blends. As a couple of people have commented, um, and there just now and, and, and a few earlier, it's, it's a long and expensive process to make Tawny Port and to get it perfect. Oh, it, hugely, hugely. But then you have to remember the maintenance of the barrels during their life. And some of the casks that we've got in our cellars and our colleagues and the, and the other people in the in the in the in the in the port trade. I mean, some of our casks are seventy, eighty, a hundred years old, um, and they're being repaired and maintained all the time. You, we have to remember that you can't just then once you've seasoned your barrel and it comes into your aging stream. When you're putting a fairly young port into a into a cask to start its aging process. So at 18 months, two years of age, and, and it's there, it's going to be throwing quite a heavy sediment to begin with, similar to what a vintage port does inside the bottle. And this will happen inside the cask. Um, and as it continues to, uh, so that has to be racked and fined periodically. Um, the other thing that you need to do is that um, as the wine ages, during the winter when the wines get a bit colder in our cellars, um, there'll be precipitation or formation of tartaric acids. It's something that they, some, they look a little bit like sugar crystals. It's a natural acid that's present in the fruit, in, in the grapes. And that forms a skin on the inside of the barrel. And after a couple of years, that skin becomes impervious because the crystal buildup is so strong that then... What does it do to the flavour? It doesn't do anything to the flavour. It's quite a neutral acid. When it crystallises, it becomes completely inert and neutral. Um, and it's a totally natural product, and it's in suspension in, in most wines in the world. Um, and um, the, um, and to, but to get the, the... What we have to do is every couple of years, we have to empty the barrels of the wine, take them to the cooperage, break them down completely, literally take the, take the, the hoops off, break the barrel down, scrape the tartaric acid accumulation off the inside, and then rebuild every barrel. So incredible. If, uh, it's a full labor of love, isn't it? So I mean, if, if you think about, I mean, just the, the Graham's Lodge itself has got just over 7,000 barrels in there. Um, so it aging, be, it and every, every two years, every single one of those barrels is broken down, cleaned, built up again, and then filled again. Wow. Um, and and you, you mentioned when it gets colder in the winter. So uh, a lot of port is, is aged in Gaia, the, the other side of the river from, from Porto. Um, some tawny port is aged in, in the Duru, and, and you may hear the term Duru bake. Oh, yes. What, yes. Uh, <laughs> why, why, why do 
we ate in 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 Gaia and and what is Durve? Um, Gaia originally in the in the eighteenth century, the, the the aging of the wines in Gaia was imposed by the by the Portuguese state um, because it was much easier to raise taxes and or charge taxes on the sale of port wine if everything went through one place than if it was being transported out of the mountainous valley of the Douro going in every different direction. Um, and so it was imposed by law we, uh, the, the, the port wine industry couldn't sell directly from the Douro to wherever it may be. Um, it had to go through the customs house of a porto. And by that, then they could levy tax and get their revenue. So that that was the original idea. But in, I think it's the only time ever in my life I've said that there's a benefit for any type of fiscal legislation. But um, fancy stories. No, but actually, the aging of wines in the Porto, because we are on the Atlantic, the western coast of Portugal, it's on the Atlantic. Um, we have um, it's a cooler, slightly more humid. Um, um, environment and it's much cooler. We don't have that, that searing heat of the Douro. And therefore the, the maturation process is slower and more gentle. And because there's more humidity in the air, there's slightly less evaporation. Um, conversely, if you go to the Douro, and as you know very well, and I mean, we, you know, we, we've been brought up in the Douro Valley. We know that in the summer, we've got temperatures that exceed 40 degrees quite regularly from, I mean, we've already this year, we've already been well into the 30s in the early May. Um, and so, and, 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 the, and the, the, it's much hotter and it's much, much drier. And so what you get is you get, a, you, you can age the wines there, but what happens is you get a much faster maturation and you get greater evaporation, and so you get more concentration in the wines. It's better. And, th and therefore, and that, and that, and a little nuance of that heat comes in, hence that term, Doru Bake. But if you're making a very old wine, and you want to get that little nth degree of extra complexity and interest into your wine, they're fantastic to use as blending components. So, you know, it's making tawny port is like making one of the most difficult jigsaw puzzles that you can ever imagine. I, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a labor of love, as a few people have uh, yeah. come, um, uh, hats off to the Coopers. You, um, we, we've mentioned blends a lot, and, and obviously that's, that's the core 10, 20, 30, 40, and as they age, they get more complex and, and develop these, 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 these additional qualities. A couple of people, Ed Burnett, I think you asked. Um, Hi, Ed. What is a creator um, and, or, or a single harvest tawny? How does that okay. differ? I mean, that, that's exactly the same. That's, thank you. It's, that's a very important question because, as you say, half, the, half of or the, the, the greater part of tawny port sales. Um, being heckled by um, your by, sister. <laughs> The, um, the, 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 um, the, the, the most of Tawny Ports are sold their, their, their single year, um, their, their single year, um, their, their blended Tawny Ports, 10, 20, 30 and 40 years of age, the blended wines as we've described. And then you can have a style of wine that is called a culheta. A culheta in Portuguese just means harvest or vintage. Um, and therefore, it's a tawny port, but it's from one single year. And we've used the term for the wine of um, single harvest. It's a little bit easier to understand. Portuguese isn't spoken sadly by most many people in the world. And so the, 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 the wines of a single year wine, and this is the 94 that I've got here. This one is the Grams, actually, um, 1994. And so that is a culheta tawny port exactly the same aging process as the as the as the as the blended the aged blended tawnies but it is a hundred percent a single wine a, a wine of a single year and throughout its aging process it's always kept as the same wine it's never blended and refreshed by other wines it's always it has to be so this 1994 here is that has been aged from since 1994 until it was bottled probably i don't know at the end of last year or early this year so, so that um, is a snapshot of an individual year this is a this is the equivalent of a, a vintage port is a is a is a port wine of a single year that is bottled when it, at about two years of age this 1994 is the same wine as was the vintage port of grams 
but has been left in a cask until now. We have continued to do, um, so there has been the racking, there has been the, the, the cleaning of the barrels and the, and, the, and the working and maintaining the barrels, but it hasn't been blended or refreshed with anything else. And I think, is it, is it blended within itself? So could you blend different uh, barrels? Obviously the individual barrels age slightly differently. So we you... do. We tend to. We, we there, there, there are two different schools of thought that you can do on that. And um, one, you can make a larger lot of wine, and then you'll get twenty or thirty barrels, or ten, or how, whatever the quantity is that you require. And you can blend them all together, and, and then you can offer a wine as um, as the nineteen ninety four. We at Graves have taken a slightly different route because every barrel will evolve in a slightly different way. Um, it might be because the staves, so that the planks of wood that make up the barrel, some are you know, a fractionally thicker than another one, so it'll have a slower evolution. Um, we, we, la we layer the barrels three or four high in the cellars in sort of pyramids of, of barrels, the ones at the bottom of the pile will be a little bit cooler than ones at the top of the pile. It might be half a degree during the course of a year, but over 20 years or 25 years or whatever, that'll make quite a difference. And so what we do with our with, with the Graham's tawnies is we bottle individual barrels. We sit, we, Charles will go through the, the selection of wines um, just as a slight aside, every single barrel of wine will have a thimble of wine taken out twice every single year, and it'll go to the laboratory and it'll be analysed. And so we will keep we're we're maintaining and looking at the wines all the time, and then as they approach what we believe to be a sort of a drinking window, Charles will analyse, see, look at them, and then he will look at ten barrels of wine, and we will select three or four that are particularly showing particularly well at the moment. And those will then be bottled. And then the remaining eight barrels of that lot will be put aside and kept until the future date. Um, so a, to a, a single harvest is a, is a super uh, small release. Uh, an absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. And they're, 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 pretty, they're, they're, they're pretty special wines. They're, they're really pretty special wines. Um, so they're, they're sort of a pinnacle uh, of, of Tawny Port. The, the, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they're, um, you know, they, they are extraordinary. And I think I need to cop follow you. I mean, what you get when, when you smell this wine, the 94, I mean, it's quite funny. There's almost a sort of a rose petal-like aroma coming off. There, there is, there's a lot of that nuttiness that comes through. But you know, I'm a 20-year-old um, Tawny here. And you can see if you hold your glass up to the to your camera, it's at the top of your phone. Yeah, the the color difference. Um, this is much because this is a single year. This is a wine that's actually this is a bit older than that one. I mean, because the, the, this obviously this is twenty six years old, and that is um, a blended wine of twenty years old. So this uh, this is the color. This is the natural color. But if the the next bottling of this wine could be a little bit more concentrated or could be a little bit more open in color than this one. Because every barrel will be fractionally different. Um, and that's the joy of that. That's the fascinating thing about these, these really old, um, these really old tawny ports and these it's old so, collectors. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing. We've been, um, a couple of people have asked, what, what would be your favorite ever tawny port? Question part one and part two, what tawny port would you drink if you could only drink one for the rest of your life? So two slightly different questions there. Well, the, 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 the quick answer to the second question is depends how big the barrel is. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I think that um, the, my regular go-to tawny port that I, I think is, is probably the, is what you have with you there. And I think you'll probably get the same answer from most of our friends and my colleagues here in the, in the port trade is, is 20 year old tawny port. It's, it's the sort of almost the, it's the perfect balance between still having the nuances, some of the rem reminiscent nuances of the red fruits and concentration of flavors of the younger wines, 
and it's already got the great complexity and depth of flavour of the of the older of a really old old port. And I think if you speak to most people in the port wine business here in 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 Porto in the Douro, um, everybody will say that twenty year old is sort of is is the go to wine. Um, and your favourite ever twenty port? Well. It's quite difficult, uh, says I. Just, um, I think probably the most complex one is something that is, is I think it's sort of one that really affects our family, which was a wine that was bought by your great-great-grandfather, my great-grandfather, um, after when he was already in the wine business, but he, came, he, was, he found um, four barrels of wine of the year that he emigrated and came to Portugal in 1882. Um, and it was a wine that, that had sat in the cellars. And I think what's extraordinary is that he had four barrels. One barrel, um, they, they did use a little bit for blending and then for topping up. But basically, um, the, 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 so AJ, my great-grandfather, his, his, his sons never commercially sold the wine. Your grandfather, my father, and, and my uncles, who are the, the next generation, always kept them aged the wine and they always looked at it and they always thought that it would keep for a little bit longer. Um, we then, we then uh, have looked after that wine in the cellars during our career as the fourth generation, myself, my cousins and my brother Paul, um, Johnny, Rupert, Charles. Um, we've kept it and, and now, and your generation, and we, um, and we thought that we would offer one cask, one pipe, of the three remaining ones, um, and it was called No Oubli, um, don't forget, which is the, the, also the Graham's family uh, motto. Thing, a wine of that age, what I was struck by was, was the freshness, orange blossom was, is my... It, 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 it's, it's, extra, it's almost got that zest of orange, that sort of, that little bit of a, a acid that pops out of the skin when you twist it. Um, I mean, it's the most amazing wine and you can taste it and, and you, you only need a very small glass and the flavour stays in your mouth for, for literally for hours afterwards. I mean, the complexity and then the history of that wine is, is just extraordinary when we think that, you know, what it's been through during its life, what it's done, um, that, you know, it was basically the beginnings of our family history in um you know, in this business, mine and yours, and and you know your grandfather and 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 the, and the, the rest of the family, um, and we're still here. So the history, but I think what what is also what what is um, I I think is 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 nice is that we actually said and and you guys now have to sort of look after it yourself and all your cousins, um, is that um, there's still two casks left, there's still two barrels left, and. We, um, our generation, we wrote a letter to ourselves saying that we wouldn't offer that wine for a few years and that we would wait until at least the next generation were in the business. Um, but then we would leave the decision up to you guys. But we would ask you to consider if you would, during your tenure as looking after the family business, you would only offer one barrel. It's a, it's a very special um, wine. Um, you know, because what it, it's it's history, and it, it is the most it is the most amazing wine. Um, yeah, exactly, both sentimentally and and in terms of quality of wine, it's it's unlike any other. The two quite uh, um, different ends of the spectrum. There, a, a, a twenty from eighteen eighty two, nobly at the sort of pinnacle of what's possible, and and twenty year old twenty four, which is. As I describe often, it's just heaven in a glass. It, 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 it is. I mean, it, it's just delicious. I mean, you know, the 90... All the wines are fantastic. I mean, they're, they're, they're all fantastic. I mean, be there. I mean, I'll, obviously, I'm biased and I like our wines. But to be honest, I, you know, a lot of, our, a lot of my friends make wonderful, these wonderful tawnies. I mean, they are such amazing. They're wonderfully complex wines. They're wines for meditation. They're wines to have a good, lively chat. They're wines to have a laugh at. And they're wines to celebrate your football team winning a game, which yeah. I hope I hope Porto will win tonight. <laughs> I I, 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 um, they're, they're playing so, Family Cow. So Diva's asking if if one of the new big casts can be given to school of port followers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I'm aware that we're running out of time now. So just quickly, um, at the end, if anybody has any questions, please do ask. But 
so to go with um, your favorite every uh, go to style of tawny pork, the twenty rolls. Uh, what would what would you eat with it? Um, these wines are very versatile. Um, they, they, I mean, they can go with main courses, but frankly, I quite, I rather enjoy my red wines and my white wines, and and so, and I think port is is a is a better accompaniment accompaniment for desserts, um, cheeses at the end of the meal, and um, and um, I see that Emily's saying chocolate. Um, and they do go, um, and 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 they are they're very versatile, um, necessarily because of their flavour profile. And you get, as you said, that sort of toasty, nutty, um, caramel flavours. They go very well with um, white fruit, um, you know, baked white fruits, um, and um, the the um, you know, cooked in the tartatins, where you get that slight caramelising of the of the sugars, and it makes the bridge over to match the wines, um, tiramisu's, um, so uh, simple stuff. I mean, just peeled oranges with caram liquid caramel poured over the top of them. Um, Good. It makes it's, me hungry. Um, is, is absolutely delicious. Cheeses keep to slightly more um, softer cheeses, not overly strong. Um, slightly more creamy flavors, not, I mean, I think the vintage port and the Ruby family, the younger, dark, full bodied um, ports will go a little bit better with wines, with, with um, things like, you know, strong Stiltons yeah. and very peppery cheddars. So these will go the with more delicate. The and I mean, then you're made in heaven. That's, that's absolutely perfect. You know, there's, a... there's the, you know, creme brulee fa family, and then it takes you into the Portuguese parcel nata. Um, um, you've forgotten, uh, well, you didn't forget, but one thing, when you said um, with desserts, I, I've, I've had a couple of port pairings, and I, I tend to agree with you that the port comes into its own at the end of a meal, but there are a couple during a meal that have really blown me away. There's a, a, a new restaurant in London called Kebab Queen who are doing some, some phenomenal things, and on the, the second course, which they pair with tawny port, which their customers are normally quite... Uh, confused by initially, but once they try it, uh, uh, blows their mind. Is is tawny port with foie gras? Yeah, and yes, that one one would be perfect. In the, in the tawny port cuts through the fattiness in the foie gras in a way that a normal wine couldn't, and the mm. sweetness in the port also balances with with that richness as well. And it it really works. The, the port doesn't taste like port actually. It tastes very vinous, like a wine. Yes, it does. And, and it, I mean, and it goes and if it is well paired and I know just for everybody that's listening that Anthony and his cousin Rob, my nephew, they went and they did this food, uh, this food tasting at the Ke Kebab Queen and none of us of the older generation were invited to join them. So I think that's a very black, black mark for them. But um, <laughs> the, um, but by all intents and purposes, I mean, the, the, the food pairings that, 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 that you had there were absolutely extraordinary. And it does show the versatility. The port is extraordinarily versatile, um, although primarily um, you can use it. I mean, fun, funnily enough, port, port and particularly tawnies work extraordinarily well with um, particularly game meats and particularly the, you know, the venison sort of reindeer yes. family from the, the, the Nordic countries. Because those are why those are meats that are very lean. There's very very little flat fat on them, and so quite often a lot of the sweetness that one's looking for to come through in meat, the complement of it will come through the tawny port, and that is what will be giving you the balance on the flavour in your mouth when you're tasting. Interesting. Um, that's yeah. That's that. I mean, it's all. It gives us a lot of food for thought. No pun intended. Um, mm. Your go-to for a tawny would be. Um, a dessert, a pastel de natta, creme brulee, ice cream, chocolate, they would all be your, your classic uh, perfect pairings. Um, and then depending on how accomplished you are as a chef, you can, you can take it up a yeah. notch. But or you can just go or with tawny port, I mean all port, but tawny in particular, is you know after dinner, the summer's coming, sitting on the terrace or the veranda of your house um, or sitting on the deck on the, in your back garden, and just having a quiet chat after dinner as the sun goes down or late at night as those balmy late summer evenings, you know, Tawny Port is absolute heaven. Yes. And and if you're a cigar smoker, it's a perfect match as well. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, uh, so much uh, uh, knowledge uh, 
imparted here. So I hope everybody watching um, enjoyed that. I, I certainly did. Um, as you can all see, I mean, Tawny Port, not only it's, it's very close to all of our hearts, it's a, it's a fantastic expression of port. Um, no doubt um, a lot of people here's favorite. But it's, um, it's, as you can see, it's a huge labor of love to make. Um, the amount of work that goes in from the cellar master and the coopers in particular, and then and then later on to the, to the to the blenders is is phenomenal but that many many years of work and careful just slow loving nurturing of these of these casks gives us this phenomenal wine at the end so hopefully you all enjoyed yeah. it and loved it and and dad thanks very much for for sharing oh, your knowledge not at all well thank you everybody for listening thank you very much bye bye have a nice evening thank you bye bye